Hi, today we're going to go through part two of the survival knots and these utility knots that I'm getting ready to tie for you are some of my personal favorites and uh, they're really useful in some of the survival situations or utility situations you're going to run across. And we're going to start out with the uh, bowline and I'm going to show you different ways to tie that and I've heard it pronounced different ways like bowline, um, bowline, uh, but we'll refer to it as the bowline knot. So starting out, I'm going to turn it an angle so hopefully you can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to start out by making a loop on my finger. And I'm going to take the tail end, run it up through the loop I just made, and back over near my thumb to where I can come under the working part of that line. Go under it, back over the top, and back through that loop that I started out with. And then I'm just going to give everything a nice tight pull. And so that's one variation of how to tie this. Now I'm going to show you another way, especially in uh, climbing. We've used this quite a bit, and you would have to learn how to tie this one-handed in case of mechanical injuries. Uh, for some unknown reason, if you, you're holding on to something with uh, one arm and you only have one arm to tie with. So I'm going to loop this around my waist. Hopefully you can see this all right. I'm going to take the tail end. I've got this around my waist. And I've got one arm. So I'm going to take this. Got it in my hand here. I'm going to go under the line and really, really close to my chest. Go up in there and twist. And you, if you have a lot of tail end like I do, you're going to have to work it. I've got that twisted. I'm going to try to work it back. And now I'm going to flip this over the main part of the line that's anchored. Take the line, pull it under there, and I'm going to work my wrist until I can get it back through the knot I had around my hand, the loop I had around my hand. I'm just going to give this a pull to tighten it around my waist. Remember, I'm only doing this with one hand. Get it pulled a little bit until I'm pretty satisfied with where it's at. I'm going to let go of that tail end. I'm going to grab the anchored part of the line and give that a pull. And then you can pull the tail end of it to have a nice knot done up for you. And that's about as close. I'll tell you what, I'll untie this and get it a little closer to the camera so you can see it. And I don't know how well this is going to work, but you can see I have my bowling. Okay, we're going to look at another way to tie this bowling. And I'm going to wrap, say I have this uh, rope anchored, I'm going to take this around my waist. I'm going to take my finger and twist up a loop, reach down in and pull the anchored end up and form me a slip knot. Now I'm not going to pull this tight or anything, it needs to be loose. I'm going to take the tail end, stick it through the loop. And I'm going to adjust it till it fits around my waist until I'm satisfied with it. And remember, you're not going to have this slip knot really tight right now. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to let go of the tail end. I'm going to take the anchor in and I'm going to give it a tug. And we got a bowline. Just several different ways to do the same knot. We're going to look at a different bowline knot. This is a bowline on a bite and you could, uh, this would be used in different situations, uh, primarily I guess rescue situations to where you could lower a rope down. Somebody could slip each one of these loops uh, through their legs because they might be unable to tie a good knot, um, mechanical injury, what have you. But this is something that you could do that uh, could prove very useful. So we're going to get started and I'm going to tie this short just to keep in frame here but it would be on a much larger scale if you needed to use this to get it around a person's legs. So I'm going to take the end of the rope, I'm going to double this over and you can see where I have the end doubled over. I'm going to take up here, loop it over like I did before on the bowline. I'm going to take the tail end of it, I'm going to feed it up through that loop that I just made, widen it out and reach around and putting that loop over all the rest of the rope and start pulling that tight. 
And once you do that, you have it nice and dressed up and tight and everything. You got a good secure knot that won't slip. You got two loops there that you could actually, once you lower that down, somebody could slide their legs in it and they would be holding up here while you try to uh, use the cinders to pull them up or what have you, pulleys, or what, whatever you needed to do to get them out of that situation. But uh, you could also use this as uh, multiple anchor points for uh, tying off or climbing or repelling. So that's bowline on a bite and uh, I hope you found that as useful as I do. Okay, one thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about was keeping your cordage bundled up nice and neat to where you could uh, get it out really quick uh, to where it's not tangled up when you need it and this unravels really easily. And of course this is paracord, some of the most useful cord there is out there. It's got a million uses, strong, great stuff. Uh, and you can see here, I have a little knot tied at the top, so that's just how I know which end to pull. So you give this a pull, and you can see it's undoing very nicely without being tangled up. And of course in the end, you're going to have a little loop knot rather that you have to undo. And it's all straightened out, ready for you to use. And the way I did that, of course, like I said, I just started out with a knot so I know which end to pull on. And I'm going to take this on my first finger, my index finger, wrap it around my pinky, and just start forming a figure eight. And just keep that looping through there, making the figure eight around my index finger and my pinky finger. And just keep wrapping until you think you have enough. I'm going to unwrap a little bit more of that, and I'm going to leave it to where it's up top near my index finger. I'm going to slide this off, and what I'm going to do is begin wrapping this just around and around the bundle that I just made with the figure eight. And this just takes a little bit of practice, and in no time you'll be wrapping this nice and neat. And I'm going to take the tail end of it, and I'm going to stick my finger over there and loop it around it a couple times. And I'm going to take that tail end and put it under the two loops that I just made and give it a little pull to get this nice and neat and bundled up. And I'll show you a way that you could also do that if you have this on your tarp to keep this. This end would be connected through the grommet on it and this would be the loose end that would be on your tarp so it's not tangled up when you get ready to get your tarp out and like I said all you do is just give it a tug. Next I'm going to take you through on how to make a barrel knot and this is going to be for a lanyard that might be on your knife into your knife handle or it could be your uh, hatchet what have you but uh, Mr. Monkey Man this is for you so you're going to start off and I don't have my knife handle or my hatchet I had left both of them at home but I'm just going to uh, pretend that we have the paracord wrap all around we're at our last hole so what we're going to do is we're going to take one end and feed it through We'll take the other end and put it back up through that last hole. Pull that tight. Then we're going to take uh, either one of the ends. We're going to make a, a loop back toward the uh, the end of the knife handle or the uh, hatchet, whatever it happens to be. And you can see how I formed that. I'm going to take that, run it under the bottom, back over the top, and just start making me some nice little coils. I'm going to do four or five on this. Like I said, you want to wrap them loose. And I'm going to take the tail end of it and start running it through the, all those coils that I made. I'm going to give it a gentle, gentle pull and start working it back toward that knife handle or hatchet handle, whatever it happens to be. And just keep it dressed up and pulling it tight until I get it near the uh, butt of that knife handle or the hatchet, whatever it happens to be. Pull them tight and then what I'm going to do, and this is about as close as I can get with it, is you, you're going to have a little loop there at the end and you'll want to widen that out a little bit and you'll want to take the end that's not feeding through the loop and 
feed it along beside the other one. Yeah, I wish I could uh, give you a close-up view, but I'm the only one working in the camera. And so when I feed it through where the other one was running through on that last loop, this is going to keep this intact. And we're just going to snug that down really tight, give it a nice tight pull. And you can see you've got one barrel nut right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, just a quick measurement, just a guess, and you might have to work this a couple times. Stick my hand in through there. I'm going to take and do the same thing again. I'm going to make a loop back. And then I'm going to start making some nice little loops again. You know, do four or five of those, whatever you put on the uh, first one that you tied, I'd do exactly the same thing. It's at your discretion. So like, like I said, once I make all those loops, I'm just going to take the tail end, work it through those loops, and just keep working it down until I get it tight and about where I want it. And like I said, you may have to tie this once or twice. To, you know, if you happen to get it off a little bit. And you'll want to do the same thing. Let me see if I can pull this a little tighter. You probably want to do the same thing is to try to get closer on this one is pull the loop up. You're going to have one loop where you've got one of the tail ends going through it and the other one's not. So what you'll want to try to do is try to pull that apart a little bit to where you could feed it through that loop with the other tail end. Almost got it. And this is going to keep it intact and keep you from sliding out. But that's it, if you can see it. So my loop is probably a little bit big. You know, if you had your handle down here that you were grabbing hold of, you know, you keep your hands in this, uh, this lanyard to keep it from slipping out if you had it on your hatchet or your knife. But there's two barrel knots on a lanyard, and that's for you, Mr. Monkey Man.